Один казак из голову стоил, Ой, скучал один казак по дому, Коню на гриву повод уронил. Ой, скучал один казак по дому, Коню на гриву повод уронил. Эх, разлетались кудры на сыплую, А до минутка мучила его, И так вот сию стеклую, А в той дали не видно ничего. И так и дело сию стеклую, А в той дали не видно ничего. Я кто казал, что ты головою, Сосал своим товарищем с тоской. My trip to Russia in July 2012 began in the capital city, Moscow. The Moscow airport my plane landed at is located on the south side of Moscow, and the ship we stayed on was docked on the north end. So we had to spend two and a half hours in rush hour traffic crossing Moscow. What surprised me the most was the large number of private cars on the road in Moscow. Not only were there a large number of cars, but they were fairly new cars as well, with BMW and Mercedes-Benz being among the most common makes. During the Soviet era, and assuming he could even afford one, a Russian would expect to wait 10 years for a piece of junk Lada and consider himself lucky to get even that vehicle. Since the roads in Moscow and St. Petersburg were built with Soviet era levels of traffic in mind, all the additional cars have overwhelmed the system and traffic jams at all times of the day were common during my visit to these two Russian cities. My general impression of Moscow and Russia in general is that she was like a grand old lady who has lost her life's fortune and is trying hard to regain her former status. Monuments and symbols from the communist era, when Moscow was the capital of the USSR and one of the two superpowers in the world, abound in Moscow. Finally, we arrived at the boat docks on the north side of Moscow and found our ship, the Viking Helgi, was parked right next to a boat dock office, which is a typical Stalin-era construction that appears as a combination between a church and an over-the-top salute to the workers' paradise, and comes complete with a steeple with a hammer and sickle star on top. The building has dates engraved on it, dating it to between 1933 and 1937 before World War II, and it has definitely seen better days, as parts of it were worn away and looked like it has not been maintained very well over the years. Let's head off on a tour of Moscow by using the Moscow Metro. Opened in 1935, the system is mostly underground. As of 2012, the Moscow Metro has 187 stations, 194 miles of track, and the deepest parts of the system is 276 feet below the ground. The Moscow Metro is the world's third most heavily used rapid transit system after the Tokyo subway and the subway in Seoul, South Korea. At the time of the Metro's construction, Stalin saw this project as a way to celebrate the communist system and demonstrate to the world that the Soviet Union was the workers' paradise. Because of this, unlike other subways in the world which can be somewhat drab and soulless environments, the Moscow Metro is full of art and some of the older stations have reflective marble walls, high ceilings and grandiose chandeliers. One of the stations we visited 
had bronze statues of revolutionary fighters from the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. If you rubbed the nose on a dog on one of these statues, you were said to receive good luck. So I gave it a good rub. We have arrived at Porash Revolushki Station. Time to leave the metro and visit Red Square. Next up, we're going to visit one of the most iconic locations in the city of Moscow, Red Square. For the majority of the 20th century, from 1917 until the fall of the communist government and the end of the USSR in the 1990s, Red Square was considered holy ground for the Soviets. A rather strange statement about a regime dedicated to atheism. The leadership of the uh, Soviet Union held massive parades here to celebrate and promote the supposed workers' paradise. The Soviets also used these parades to display the might of the colossal Red Army all in furtherance of spreading the Marxist belief throughout the world. Before coming to Moscow, I had always thought that Red Square was part of and inside the Kremlin. In reality, only one of the fortified walls of the Kremlin faces onto Red Square. Across Red Square from the Kremlin is the Goom Department Store building with a facade that is 794 feet long and covers most of the length of the east side of the square. The term GUM, which is a, an abbreviation from Russian, stands for Main Universal Store and is the name of the main department store in many cities of the former Soviet Union. Known as the State Department Store, the most famous GUM store is the large store in Moscow facing Red Square. Today the building is now a shopping mall. Red Square does not get its name from the color of the red brick buildings that surround it. In fact, during some period of the square's history, the buildings were covered in whitewash. Nor does the square derive its name from the link between communism and the color red. Rather, the name comes from the old Russian word Krasnya, which can be translated as either red or beautiful. The beautiful meaning of the word was applied to St. Basil's Cathedral and was later applied to the square that bordered the cathedral. Therefore, red square should be interpreted as beautiful square. St. Basil's was built on the order of Tsar Ivan the Terrible, between the years 1555 to 1561 to commemorate one of Ivan's military victories. Because the resulting church was so beautiful, there is a legend that Ivan the Terrible had the builder's eyes gouged out to prevent him ever designing another church to rival this one. Located about halfway down Red Square and just outside the walls of the Kremlin, is the Lenin Mausoleum, built to contain the body of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, the first communist leader of the USSR from November 1917 until his death in January 1924. During the Soviet era, the mausoleum was used as a reviewing stand by the Soviet Politburo to observe the various parades conducted on Red Square. As part of the uh, 1945 Victory Parade, the flags and banners of the defeated German Armed Forces and the Nazi Party were marched to the foot of the Lenin Mausoleum where they were tossed to the ground below where Stalin was watching the parade. Also at the 1945 Victory Parade, Marshals Gregory Zukov, who had formally accepted the uh, German surrender to the Soviet Union, and Konstantin Rozakovsky, 
rode through the parade grounds on a white and black stallions respectively, while Stalin observed from the top of the Lenin mausoleum. Stalin had decided not to ride a horse himself at the victory parade, as he feared falling off and being made to look foolish. In part due to this famous horse ride at the 1945 Victory Parade, an equestrian statue of Marshal Zhukov was erected in front of the uh, Russian Historical Museum by the Resurrection Gate into Red Square on the 50th anniversary of this parade to celebrate the life of Marshal Zhukov. Now that we've explored Red Square, Let's pay a visit to the Kremlin itself. The name Kremlin means fortress, and many cities in Russia have a Kremlin. But most people, when they hear the name Kremlin, think of this complex in Moscow that dates from the 11th century and serves today as the official residence of the President of the Russian Federation. We'll begin our visit by entering through a gate in the Boriskaya Tower and proceed by the Grand Kremlin Palace, which was formerly the Tsar's R Moscow residence and was built between the years 1837 to 1849. Four cathedrals are enclosed on the grounds of the Kremlin, but during the Soviet era, their religious function was discontinued. In fact, the grounds of the Kremlin itself were closed to tourists until the Khrushchev thaw when the Kremlin was reopened to foreign visitors in 1955. Today, the Kremlin cathedrals are administered as museums, but the Patriarch of Moscow has an office in the Kremlin and religious services are sometimes served in these former cathedrals. Let's continue on inside the Kremlin grounds and visit the Tsar's Bell, which is 20 feet tall and has a diameter of 22 feet. Made of bronze, the bell was broken during casting in the year 1737 and has never been rung. The bell is currently the largest bell in the world and weighs over 222 tons. The Tsar's cannon was cast in the year 1586 in Moscow and is 19 and a half feet long and weighs 39 tons. The cannon was never used in war but there is physical evidence on the cannon that it was fired at least once. We are now coming to areas of high security, closed to tourists, as we are passing the Kremlin Senate, in which the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, has his offices. The State Kremlin Palace whose modern style does not match the other historic buildings in the Kremlin, was built in the Khrushchev era and opened in 1961 as a locale for Communist Party meetings. As we passed by, our tour guide pointed out where Joseph Stalin had his living quarters in the Kremlin. Stalin was the last Russian leader to actually live in the Kremlin. Our tour of the Kremlin is complete and we will leave by way of a gate in the Trinity Tower. The time has come to pay a visit to the Russian National Museum of the Armed Forces in Moscow.
Time for something different. Let's attend a concert of Russian music. It is my tour group's last night in the city of Moscow, and we are starting out with a relaxing cruise along the river.
Here we are passing the Cathedral of Christ the Savior, a short distance from the Kremlin. The cathedral was commissioned by Tsar Alexander I to celebrate Russia's victory over Napoleon Bonaparte's invasion of Russia in 1812. In 1931, Joseph Stalin ordered that the cathedral be torn down. In its place, Stalin had plans made up to construct the Palace of the Soviets, a skyscraper to house an administrative center and a Congress Hall topped by a massive statue of Lenin. Construction started in 1937 but was discontinued in 1941 when the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union. Work never resumed on the project and for many years the site was used for a large swimming pool. In 1990, the Russian Orthodox Church received permission from Mikhail Gorbachev to rebuild the cathedral. The work began in 1994 and the new cathedral was completed in the year 2000. We are now coming up on the statue of Peter the Great located in the river. The statue was built to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the Russian Navy, which was founded by Peter the Great. It is the eighth tallest statue in the world. In November 2008, the Peter the Great statue received the dubious distinction of being voted the 10th ugliest building in the world by the website Virtual Tours, and it certainly lives up to this award. The Seven Sisters are a group of Moscow skyscrapers designed in the Stalin era and built between 1947 to 1953. Moscovites sometimes refer to them as Stalin's wedding cakes as they are built in an elaborate style. The one we are passing here houses the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are passing the Kremlin one last time to see it lit up at night on our way for one last visit to Red Square. Our visit to the city of Moscow is now complete. Time to return to the Moscow boat dockyard and head off into the Russian countryside on our rivers and canals towards the city of St. Petersburg.